welcome and welcome to my YouTube channel. So, this was one of the vlogs that I did that I had to re-record. Um, and I guess it will be a healing process for me as well. And hopefully, um, this video or testimony would help someone go get through what they're going through. So, um, let's get into it again. So I'm doing this off my other camera and hopefully, hopefully it would record this and I don't have any glitches or any problems with uploading this camera. Okay. So I'm going to start with um, molestation. And this happened when I was, excuse me, I can't even remember what age I was, right? So I'm going to say um, what I do remember is it was the son's babysitter, and she had two sons. I want to say she had a daughter, too. I can't remember. But anywho, oh, this is so weird. So I'm jump. We're gonna jump jump right into it. Um. So I think it was. I can't remember where my mom knew this lady from. I don't know if she was like a. Just a, a babysitter, babysitter, or like an ex co worker that babysitter. I can't remember, but anywho, she had two sons, and I remember that you know they used to, to touch on me. It was the oldest, the older son, and then of course the younger son followed, and he was like a child like me. I wish I could remember what age I was. So, anyway, that went on for um, it didn't go on for too long. But let me tell you how God worked that one out. So I remember she fed us. It was some fried fish. And the fish, um, when I smelt it, I guess it must have been like the grease or something. When I smelt it, I became nauseous. So I told her, I was like, I don't, I don't want to eat it. Like, I'm, you know, I'm not hungry. But like, you know how back in the day, it's like, you're going to eat your food. They basically force you to eat the food, right? So I end up. Uh, taking a few bites, and after those few bites, I threw up. Like I remember, I remember how everything was. We were outside. It was like she had like this picnic table set up, and I just threw up. Ugh. So of course she had to tell my mom what happened, and I guess my mom was like, "Oh no, my baby not coming here," because I guess she must have told her the whole story. Like she didn't really want to eat it, but I made it eat it, and she threw up. But after that incident, my mom did not bring me back over there. And that's how God worked that situation out. But that was like my first introduction that I remember, that I recall, I would say, of like coming in like um, the spiritual contact with like lust uh, and things like that. Because even if you were molested, you were raped, you know, it's still something that you have to heal from. It's still some things that may have been. I'm going to say may have probably been embedded in you or, like I say, basically some things you have to heal from. You have to get rid of those soul ties. So just because you've been molested or raped, it don't mean that you got free and, you know what I'm saying? I didn't, it wasn't consensual, so you good. No, you still have to heal from those things. And honestly, like, even though that happened when I was a child, I'm just now learning that and understanding, like, yeah, even though my spirit is free, my spirit is great. Like, my spirit is great. God's been bringing so many things to me that I still have to heal from. And the molestation and the rapes were things that I never really sat down and took time out to heal and do the work. Now, um, 2023, I was in therapy for, you could say, almost, almost the whole year, pretty much. And it helped me so much. I broke free from so many things. So I'm a big, I'm a big therapy advocate, right? So 
it was so many things that I had to heal from and deal with and unravel and get straightened, right? That the molestation and the rapes kind of were kind of placed on a back burner because even though I may have been living and seeing uh, through my traumas, it wasn't as important as what was going on in my life at the time. If if I'm making sense, it wasn't. It was priority, but it wasn't priority. Like there's other things that I got going on that I need to fix before I get back here. So it's like this house. Like we are houses, right? And they say with each room, you want to let God in and say, God, you could have control of this of this room. I let you in this room. I invite you in. But there was just one door that I guess I didn't let God in to really heal. And when I did, you know, give him the invitation, it was just dropping all kinds of stuff, you know. And what I mean by invitation, I want to say the prayer was some sort like, um, is there any other things that I need to heal from or forgive? Let me know. It was to some to that that extent. And baby, when I tell you he was dropping stuff that I thought I either forgave or I totally forgot. Like, I'm not saying that if you were molested or raped, you just forget about it. But, you know, for the most part, you bury that stuff. You like, look, I'm going to put it under the rug. I'm going to bury it. I'm going to lock it in this door. And we ain't never going to go back there because I'm not going back there. It's very uncomfortable. And sometimes you may still feel ashamed or whatever the reason is. But it was definitely something that I thought I threw away and got rid of and was just okay without having to go back there and sit with it and heal from, like, how how do you really feel about this? Like, how did that experience affect your your decisions today? And when I sit and think about it, I say, oh, my. It, it's like I was still operating out of that trauma without knowing that I was. So I'm just grateful and thankful that God has revealed that to me. That was my first that I recall that I remember of like sexual uh, trauma, like molestation and rape. So my first, first rape situation um, was, okay, so I was with this guy, right? And of course he was an older guy. I want to say, I was a teenager. I can't remember what teen, but it was with the older guy. I don't, I don't know if he was in his early 20s or late teens, but you know what? I'm, I think he was in his early 20s. So, And it's so crazy because to this day, I cannot remember how I met this dude. Like real talk, to this day, I cannot remember how I met this dude. But, you know, we were conversating or whatever. Of course, it was one of those sneak arounds because... Um, I don't think I could had have a boyfriend at the time. I can't remember what the um conversations were like with me and my mom at that time about, you know, boyfriends and, and you know, things of that nature. But um I know my mom, she worked a lot, so you know how they go. Um, you just get into stuff. And I was a very curious person because my mom was an overprotective parent and uh, my dad wasn't in my life growing up like that. So it was just me and her and my imagination. And when I tell you my imagination used to do all this and just wanted to see what was, you know, what was going on outside because my cousins, my other friends, they stayed outside. They, you know, used to hear about, oh, yeah, we were here and we did this. And I'm like, wow, sounds fun, bro. But anyway, so like I say, um, he was, I guess you could say my boyfriend or a dude I was messing around with. I don't know. I can't remember the titles that we had or if we even had titles, but it was definitely some guy that I was involved with. So, um, you know, we were uh, messing around, I guess you could say. We were involved sexually. I would say that definitely involved sexually. So I remember this one time he came and got me and uh, I can't remember. Like when I tell you this has been so long, I don't Thank you. It couldn't have been the late 90s. It had to be the early 2000s. I don't think it was the late 90s, but it was, you talking about a century, baby, like this is years ago. 
So I remember he took me, we were going somewhere. And then he was like, oh, I need to stop over here for something. You know, me and you could chill in the process. Because he, um, he was involved in the music industry in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And I'm, I remember a popular Louisiana rapper posted this guy. And said he basically was looking for him because he was, I guess, being scandalous. And I guess dude was still being a snake out there in Louisiana. But anywho, uh, we went by this, um, like this little motel, so hotel motel. So we get out, you know, I'm, I'm with my dude. So I'm with my dude, so my guards are down. I ain't tripping about nothing, you know. I'm trusting this guy because I've hung out with this guy plenty of times before. So... We get in there, you know, he starts talking, and then he's using your imagination what, what was going on between me and him. And I heard something in the bathroom, and I'm like, whoa, what, like, what's going on? And he was like, oh, don't worry about that. That's uh, such and such. I'm like, bro, we got him, like, doing something. So, so long story short, not to get into too much detail, dude comes out, the guy that I was in a relationship with holds me down. Use your imagination. Um, so, of course, after that, I'm looking like, you know what I mean? So, guy uh, that I was with, you know, took me home, and that was that. Now, this is about a story. When I first recorded this, it brought tears to my eyes. But now, since I was able to say the first time, this time shouldn't be so hard. So there was a time me and my mom was out eating. And I can't remember the restaurant. Sorry. We were out eating. And um, I remember seeing the older guy. I remember seeing the older guy. And dude looked like he was married with children. My age. You used to, like, I used to hear about stuff like that. Like, how could a man rape a, a girl or a child? Even, a, even boys, you know. Um... And they have children the same age as the people that they're having sex with. like. And so I'm looking. And I guess the look on my face, my mom was like, what's wrong? I was like scared. And I mean, I should have said something then, but I didn't. Because in my mind, like, it was like I'm overthinking. I'm like, I don't want him to do nothing to my mom. I don't want my mom to turn up. Because if y'all know Miss Sharon Bluen. Baby, born and raised from New Orleans, didn't take no mess. What you saying? And I didn't want nothing to happen to her. Um, and I didn't want to cause a scene because me and her, we out eating, having a good time. Like, I didn't want to be a vibe killer. So, it was so many things going through my mind. But, so, I didn't say anything. And I was just like, I told her, I was like, oh, nothing. You know, um, I can't remember the conversation after that. Like, if she was trying to, if she was pressing, like, no, what's going on? But. I can't remember, but just seeing him out with what appeared to be his wife and kids, it was just like, I was in total shock and disgust because, dude, like, I know what you did, you know. Um, I don't even know if it's even, I don't know, what's the word, valuable or okay to even say who it was. Like, I forgot his name. I just know that he was a part of a um, music group, the Four Horsemen. He was the bald head guy. That's all I remember of the guy. So, yeah, that was that the guy who I was with at the time. I want to say his name was Christopher, but he was like light skin, green eyes. You know, a pretty boy. You young. You like, oh my god, so pretty. But like I said, he had so many enemies. So, um, you know, this is not to like bash anyone. Because truly, I've forgiven all y'all. This is my testimony video. This time, for sure, I know I was in high school. And um, this was someone that I went to Baker High School with and that stayed. Um, if you guys know Baker, Louisiana, like um, Barrington, those townhomes, and then you have Heritage Court. Like, I don't know what the setup is now. This was years ago. Excuse me. So... I lived in Barrington, he stayed in Heritage Court, and a lot of us, we caught the bus or whatever, so we used to walk, walk, um, walk home, you know, catch the bus together, after school, sometimes we used to play basketball, or even on the weekends, we used to play uh, football, tag football, tackle football, 
they used to play, you know, Negro Knot. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And sometimes I would play when I was allowed to go outside. Um, or when my mom would be outside. I used to go and play with them, but it wasn't that often. Or maybe even video games, like when my mom was at work, I'll let them come in, play some video games and things like that. But you know when, you know, you got to go, mom finna come home for work or whatever. Um, but there was this guy that went to Breaker High, and I remember this day, um, and I should have listened, but I didn't really understand too much when it came to, uh, like, your intuition or discerning. I felt it, but I didn't know what it was to really act upon it, you know. But I do remember, I took it off the bus, he was like, yo, want to check out some beats? They got some some beats, you know what I'm saying? You can listen to it, check out. So I'm like, my passion, my heart was with music, you know. And I think, I want to say that's what the enemy used to get me to go there. But when he said that, it was kind of like, I started to keep going, but then I was like, ooh, beats. <laughs> I know it's like basic, but like I really love music, you know. So, I said, all right, you know, right quick, you know what I'm saying? And I was like, man, just don't stay long or whatever. So, we go in there, I'm chilling, and he like, you know, wait right here. So, I'm chilling on the front, in the front room on the sofa sitting down. And I'm like, man, like, what are you doing? Like, it take you that long to get, get your, your boom box and your, uh, your CD? Ooh, we had the CDs back in the day. And I'm just like, man, I'm finna go, but so... When I thought about getting up and going, he comes out. I'm like, all right, because I show off in it. You know what I'm saying? So basically, he gets the boombox, the CD, start playing the beats. You know what I'm saying? I'm listening, I'm vibing, I'm vibing. And he pretty much, you know, grabbed me and used your imagination. So I tried to fight him off. I couldn't. Just waited until, you know, he was finished. So um, uh, after that, I walked home. And I want to say my mom was home. I really want to say my mom was home. But it was one of those, you know how like on the sitcoms you see the children walking in real fast. Oh, hey, hi. And they just keep going. I want to say at the time my mom was occupied with something. Because normally, don't nothing pass up, Sharon. <laughs> like, don't nothing pass up. Because I want to say it was that time when I had walked in real fast and it was just like, you know, and um, I remember telling um, a female friend, a homegirl, it wasn't like no LGBT thing, but I told her and I told the dude that I was dating at the time. You know how you had your little boyfriend, your high school boyfriend, but all y'all really do is just pass letters back and forth. And he stayed in our neighborhood. Matter of fact, he stayed, like, if I was to look out my room window, he stayed right across the street. So I ended up telling her. And she empathized with me, and I ended up telling him. And he was like, oh, I'm going to see about it or whatever. So I look out my window. You know, he talking with them. They just, you know, talking or whatever. And um, I see him coming back in the neighborhood. And they just walking like it's all cool. And from that day, the dude that I was dating in high school, he kind of backed off me. And it kind of hurt my feelings, I ain't going to lie, because I'm like, how? Oh. You supposed to be my boyfriend, and you sit here acting all buddy buddy with this dude after what he did to me. So, me and him, we didn't really talk too much. It wasn't until let me see, that was high school. I want to say possibly ten years later, something like that. The guy that I was that was my boyfriend at the time, he hit me up. I think it, I think it might have been Facebook, and he was like. Um, did that really happen between you and Champ? And I was like, yeah, like, why would I lie about something like that? You know, this was, of course, before the Me Too, it, you know, even though women have lied about that. Like, I wouldn't lie about nothing like that. And I was like, no, like, why would I lie about something like that? And he was like, well, I just wanted to say that, you know, I'm sorry for not being there for you. I was like, wow. You know, even though a part of me was like, it's kind of too late. But the other part was like, wow, that's what's up. You know what I mean? Like, maybe a part of me needed that, wanted that. So, 
Um, that was that story, and I did hear from my my home girl that I told it. Another girl um, was raped or assaulted by him as well, and there were some rumors of charges. So I'm not sure if those charges um went through or not. No, I'm in college. I am in college. It is the year. When, this is my first time being in Georgia. My first time that I went to Georgia. Um, I want to say this was 2007. 2007. Um, now when the rape occurred. I can't remember if it was 2007 or 2008. Because I stayed out there. Well, I was in Georgia for like a year in college. So anyway, so... You know, I'm doing my music thing. You feel me? Like... I did a show and the brat was there, you know, so she gave me a shout out. Like I'm really I'm really moving out here in these in these ATL Georgia streets. What you saying? Who am I? She is me. And I wish they had the footage because we had this show on campus at the college campus. You know how the college campuses I mean the dorms, they'll have this like entertainment room where they have like a pool table and stuff like that. And I was just rapping, and the dudes was rapping with me. We had the crowd going crazy. Oh, my gosh. I wish somebody had that footage. Because they claim somebody recorded it, but I've never seen it. I always wanted to see it. And I don't know. Anyway. So, I linked up with, and I don't know. I can't remember how I linked up with these guys. But they were a &Rs from Universal. And um, I got a ride to the studio. Because at this time, even though I was in college, um, kids having cars in college wasn't really a big thing. We was just happy. We was out the hood. We was out of our hometown. We was in a new city that be popping. You know what I'm saying? And I was in school for video production and film. I wanted to do audio, but it was talking about my grades from my freshman year, so I had to start a video and go to audio, but I really liked the video because the teacher was amazing and the blood way she taught that I fell in love with video, so I kept on going with video production. Okay, that was a quick brief of my college. So, um, I'm in the studio, we vibing, and the one thing I noticed about, like, the music industry, they would always ask me about my sexuality, and I never really understood why, because what they got to do with music, but one dude was like, um, and I don't know if he was for real, or uh, lying, or, you know, I don't know, he was like, uh, um, um, I don't even know if I should say her name, but she's a multi-million dollar, like, artist, um, she had her own TV show on B. Was it BET? Reality TV show on BET. Beautiful. And it was like, oh, she like you. And, you know what I'm saying? All this other stuff. And I was like on the down low, even though I was kind of attracted to him. But I wasn't really acting upon those, like talking about, you know, even though I did in the past. But that's a whole other story. So, anywho. We in studio, we vibing. I go ahead and uh, lay my verse down. You know, um, it's like, yo, that's fire, that's dope. We end up going to the club that same night, giving it to the DJ, because that's what, I don't know if they still do that, but back in the day, that's how it was. You you in the studio, you vibing, you record it, you want to test your record out, you go to the club, give it to the DJ, the DJ is spinning, you might have to pay over, you might have to tip them, or... It was like they might just show you love and just play it. You know, I, don't, I doubt if they do that now, but maybe so. I don't know. So he plays it. DJ loves my verse. I'm not just saying that just to say that, but he played my verse back like at least four to five times, like back to back. I'm not just saying that just to say that like this is for real, for real. This happened. And I was like, oh, that's fire. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, it made me feel good. But, um, you know, after that, um, after that experience, I remember my homeboy telling me, and I can't remember if this was before or after the, the, the rape situation. He was like, he called me, he was like, hey, yo, I wanted to tell you that um, they took you off the verse and put somebody else on there. And I was like, what? I think this might have been after. And I was like, what? Uh, he was like, yeah. He was like, um, it might have been before, I'm sorry. He was like, yeah, the girl um, that they put on there had sex with. So people really do in the industry, they have sex with position. Like, of course, it's probably not now with everything that's 
has been coming out, but people really, people really do that. I wasn't gonna do that because, baby, I have my own studio. I know how to record myself. I'm not finna have sex for no studio time, for no beats, for none of that. I've always been like strong-willed in that way. Like if I wanted to do something with you, I'm gonna do it because I want to, not because I need something from you. I don't know. I guess this is my my stubborn ways, whatever. So anywho, um, I remember one of the ARs hit me up one day and he was like, "Yo, I want to have a meeting with you. Uh, I want to like, you know, I'm interested in being your manager." We could talk about some other business things, you know what I mean? And I'm like, cool, like, you know, we want to meet up. And he was like, he gave me uh, the address to his his residence. And that was the first mistake because, like, I didn't, I didn't, I was kind of ob oblivious. I think that's the word I want to use. Basically, if you told me something, I, I believe you. I'm, I wasn't going to, like, second guess you, discern it. I was, whatever you, your word was bond because that's what I grew up with, you know what I'm saying? My mom's word was bomb. Like, when she said it, you feel me? The follow-through was there. I'm thinking everybody like that, like this, even though, you know, rape some molestations and things like that in the past. So, anywho, um, I, I go over there. I want to say I took the martyr, the martyr, the martyr train over there, and it was daytime. So, I did make sure it was daytime, though. So, I go over there. I'm like, what's up? What's up? I brought my, um, my laptop. What? Did I have a laptop? No, I'm sorry. I think it was my thumb drive. I don't think I had a laptop then. I think I had my desktop. Yeah, I know. So I had my thumb drives or whatever, and he, I think he had the computer. So we plugged up, you know what I'm saying, listening to some music, you know what I mean, talking about some management things. And I remember I went to the bathroom, and I came out. The vibe was totally different. So at this point, I'm like, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm feeling the energy change drastically. So, I'm, I can't remember the feeling, but I just know that, you know how in those shows that you, or cartoons, you have like the exclamation that pops up the top of the head? That's what I, I was like, something right. And, you know, so I'm sitting down trying to, you know, play off the energy like, I, like, I don't know what's going on. So then he begins to keep talking and then I noticed he got like um, a little touchy and use your imagination. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, that situation really that was painful for me. Like I remember feeling pain. So next day, my homeboy, he was another one of the A and R's from Universal, and he hit me up. And uh, I think I want to say he came through my to my dorm, right? And he was doing some, uh, I think we were recording something. And he was at my computer. And I guess he could tell that something was up with me. Like he was, the energy was kind of off with me. And, and this is, of course, because he came over, definitely somebody I trusted. I guess definitely not the right time, right? But definitely somebody I trusted. So come on, he came over, you know, we was always joking and laughing. Just good times always great gave great gems and I knew he was a rider for me, you know. So he um he was basically just poking at me because he knew something was up. So he just kept pressing the issue like what's what's wrong? Like what's going on? And and I just bust out crying and told him what happened and he was like, Wow. Um not to give out too much detail but I could have got my get back with him. But I didn't want to have blood on my hands. Those were my molestation and rape experiences. Um, so, what's next? What's next is pretty much um, going, actually doing the work to heal from those experiences. Because I've never went to therapy for those things. Even though I've told them that I've experienced those. But I've never said, hey, let me sit down. Let me process my feelings. So obviously, obviously, God's been putting on my heart to do that. So that's uh, definitely in the works as we speak. For you people that's always saying, Why y'all take so long to say something? Man, there are so many reasons why. One reason I stated in the beginning is something that I put to the back. 
And I, it was totally not a priority, not something that I think about. Trauma, you tend not to go there. Um, there are situations where I did say something where nobody believed me. Oh, man, there was another incident. Darn it. There was another incident before I get into that. I forgot about this one. Um, so another music situa- music industry situation uh, with management. And uh, we were basically club hopping. And with club hopping, we were speaking with the DJs, uh, talking to the people. It's like basically I was like campaigning, really, with me and him. And I guess he's seeing how I flow and I'm seeing how he flow. We had a good work ethic together. I would say that. And, um, and you know, it was one of those country clubs where, not a yeehaw country club, but like a club that's in the country, but it's hood. And it was BYOB, I think it's Bring Your Own Drink or something, however it go. So he popped his trunk and he had some drink. And at that time, I was a drinker. I was definitely a drinker. So I don't know if it was I drunk too much or if we slipped, some, slipped something in there. Or was it just me drinking a lot and just moving and dancing? How I was feeling. But um, towards the end of the night, I started to feel a little nauseous. Especially when we were um, riding in the car. And he was taking me to um, to my house. And I think I want to say this time I was living, you know how you, if you grew up in like a single parent home and you go visit your, your other half in the summers, I was one of those kids. <laughs> so I was uh, staying with my dad at the time and he was married to someone. I want to say we stayed in, was it Rayville? I think it was Rayville, Louisiana at this time. And this was around 2011, 2012. 2011, 2012, around that year that this happened. So this was after my college experience. And um, so on my way home, and he's like, it looks like you finna throw up. I don't want you to throw up in my car. I could take you to a hotel. And I'm like, no, nah, take me home. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? It's like I'm up on game, but at the same time, I've been drinking. So I'm kind of like experiencing a little, what is it, vertigo? I'm going to go with us be spinning. And, like, I'm just like, uh, I just want to go home. I throw up at the toilet at the house. You know what I'm saying? He was like, no, I want you to throw up in my car. So, at this time, I'm, you know, I'm texting my dad. I don't know if I called him. I think I might have called. But I was just texting my dad. It was like, the dude trying to take me to a hotel. I don't feel safe. Like, can you come get me? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, okay, I'm taking precautions now. I I've been through this a couple of times before. I'm trying to be proactive, reactive, you know what I'm saying? Because I wouldn't want this to go down again. So, uh, pretty much, my dad doesn't call back, doesn't text back, and I'm like, oh, great. So, we go to the hotel, use your imagination, and during that, um, you know, intertwining I was throwing up um so that's what made me feel like okay was this a setup did I drink too much was I careless with my drinking was something slipped because I did feel a little you know what I'm saying even though I was like uh, you know so anyway I go home um I get a whooping and get called out my name so of course, I'm like, bro, life's not fair. I want to go back home to my mom <laughs> type situation. So that was, I totally forgot about that one. So that was um, my most recent experience. Like I say, that was 2011, 2012, around that time. Yeah. Yeah. So that one wasn't really too clear um, if that was... It was I definitely was taken advantage of, but I don't know if I could call it a, a rape. I don't, you know what I mean? Because things were not clear, and I wish I had a chance to really sit down and talk with him about that. About that time, you have times where people don't believe you. Um, you have times where people will call you out your name, like it was your fault. 
So there are times when women do speak up about these things. They just don't get help, you know. And as far as telling my mom, I told my mom, and I don't know what transpired me to tell her, but I told her about one situation, one incident. And she just started bawling, crying, like, oh, I'm so sorry, baby. I wish you would have told me. Kind of how a caring, parent, a caring parent would respond if one of their children's male or female said that they were sexually assaulted. And I wanted to tell her about all the others, but I was like, the way she crying, I'm going to have to take it to the grave. Because I couldn't, I don't want to see my mom that sad and, you know, not upset, but like, you know. You don't want to see your mom cry. So I just told her about one incident. Um, yeah, so. But but there's so many reasons why they don't. And I think it's something that people need to have more empathy for. But, you know, people, well, if it was me, I would have. Yeah, okay. We'll see. I probably thought the same thing. You know, if, if I ever get, man, I'm telling. My mom always told me to tell. Don't let nobody blackball you and say don't tell your mama because they're going to hurt her. Until it happens, you don't know. And I remember in therapy, they talked about this freeze and flight uh, response to traumatic situations. Back in the day, I was a freezer. So it would just catch me off guard and I would freeze. You know what I mean? Um, uh, going through a traumatic situation or a traumatic event. Um. So anyway, for the for people who have experienced rape or molestation, I want to tell you that your first priority, excuse me, of course, is building a relationship with God. But you may not even be mentally, um, I don't want to say prepared or aware, mentally, I can't even think of the word to put right there, um, to have a the best relationship with God because you need you need to heal from those traumas because a lot of times you don't even feel worthy of being in God's presence. You know what I'm saying? If you if you get what I'm catching, catch it. And I'm not saying don't pursue a relationship with God. I'm not saying that. Pursue a relationship with God, baby, because that's the only person that's going to really heal you. At the same time, you need to go to therapy, therapy, therapy and find the right therapist i know sometimes it can be expensive so hopefully you can find um if you on medicaid most of that is is free if you on medicaid um but if you're not on medicaid try to find you a therapist even if you can afford just to go once a month or once every uh two weeks when i was going to therapy last year i was going every friday and then it was like every monday when i got to um georgia um but yeah, definitely healing should be a priority because everything that you would do in life will be tainted. Every relationship that you have will be very toxic. Even if you're happy, it'll still be toxic, but you're toxic, so you don't see anything wrong with it. So your relationships are not really going to prosper. Pretty much everything you do will have some type of um, toxicity about it. Trust me. <laughs> I know. So definitely healing. I can't stress that enough. Healing and building your intimacy and your relationship with God. Because if you have an intimacy relationship with people, how do you expect your intimacy level to be great with God? You know what I mean? Definitely something to think about. But please, 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 I can't stress enough. Your healing is so important. It's so detrimental to you prospering in life. You being free mentally, spiritually, physically, all that. Heal. I know at times we do things to cope. Um, I know early on with molestation and rapes, I tended not to want to be around. I felt very uncomfortable around men. When they sat next to me, I would kind of lean over like this because I was so uncomfortable being around men. And growing up without a father, I definitely didn't understand them. I just knew that I knew what they liked. And they'll do anything to get it. I knew that. So I definitely didn't trust the man. Also, um, you know, we tend to turn towards drugs, alcohol, um, even sometimes promiscuity. You know, you tend to fall deeper into lust. Some people may turn um, to the same sex 
that wasn't necessarily in my case because I was already like I already had same sex attraction before the rapes for sure. I'm not sure about the molestation though. I don't think I was liking girls then. Um, and that's why healing is so important because with that trauma we take upon that trauma is our identity, and we start to move in the world. Um, I said I don't want to keep using toxic. But it's definitely an error. Like it's kind of like everything you touch is not going. It's not going to work out in the long, in the long end. And you will have messed up friendships, relationships with family. Like I said, spouses is going to be toxic all the way around. What is also very important besides the healing part, forgiveness. This is such a big one to forgive those people who have molested you have raped you and also have beat you in any type of offenses as well. But this video is based around molestation and rape. Whoever molested you, whoever raped you, I just like I'm begging you to please forgive them. Because you don't want to be in bondage because of what somebody did to you. And they're, they didn't move on with their life. They doing good. Even if they're not doing they didn't move on with their life. They're not thinking about you. They did what they did and they moved on. And you still holding on to that years ago. You know, based upon what happened back then, you still making every decision based upon what happened back then. Out of hurt and not trying to be hurt. Like it's same thing, the same goes with like relationships. Like we'll base our present relationship on our last relationship. Oh I'm not doing that because such and so they did that when you know, I try to do that, so I'm not doing that with my next relationship. And that's hurt people, hurt people. So definitely that's why it's so important to heal and forgive. Forgive, heal, forgive, heal is number one. Forgive, number two. Well, forgive should be number one, but heal and forgive. Now, of course, after you forgive them, you may hear some people say, oh, it's not in the Bible to forgive yourself. We need to forgive ourselves because um, especially for the ones who didn't say anything, or for the ones who may have said something. For the ones who felt like I should have did this. Or I shouldn't have went to that, that person's house. Or whatever you may be blaming yourself. It's not your fault. Baby girl or baby boy. If you were standing outside butt naked. That don't give nobody no excuse and no reasons to take advantage of you. They are in the wrong. Forgive yourself. Don't feel shameful. There's no condemnation. When you ask God to um, forgive you, but forgive yourself. Don't be ashamed of what happened to you. You have to erase that shame, baby, because because that'll eventually cause health problems. You going to the doctor trying to figure out what's wrong, and they can't find that. I don't know. The doctor say no. I took the X-ray. I don't know. You know, take two of these and call me in the morning, baby. Forgiveness will unforgiveness will cause health problems and will cause you to have a premature death. And do you really want to die with all that? Nah. So healing, forgiveness, and forgiving yourself. After those two, um, take it easy. Take it easy on yourself. You know, take time to, oh, excuse me, as they say, self-care. Like um, maybe going to a spa, reading the Bible, reading an inspirational book. Find something that you like to do. That'll um kind of kind of soothe you and and calms you. You know, like I say, definitely therapy, baby. <laughs> definitely therapy. Now, with with all that being said, um, there are some things that I did learn the hard way, of course, and what I experienced. So, if you are a young woman, I don't care. You know what? Even if you are um, but for all my young women who may not know, I don't want to say know any better. I can't really speak for the guys, but guys, you can take an account to this too because there are people praying on y'all too. I mean, nowadays, men getting raped, boys getting raped too um, by the same sex and the opposite sex, of course. If somebody wanted to have a meeting or something with you, make sure it's in a public place. Don't go to nobody's house. I don't care what it is, what, what kind of opportunity it is. You know, unless you got a gun on you and you ready to do, 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 which I don't advocate for violence. So just meet up in the public place. Like, it's certain stuff like that I wish I would have. And this goes back to um, just forgiving myself because 
Like I say, your word is bond. I just hung out with these people before. I'm thinking it's all good, you know. Knowing what I know now, I definitely wouldn't have done that. Um, yeah, so, you know, just be very, very cautious and discerning of people. Because we're living in a time now where hmm, there's a lot of wolves and sheep clothes. And you really have to pray for discernment. But I don't want you guys that have been molested, that have been assaulted, uh, sexually assaulted, um, to blame yourselves. Like, that that was a big thing. I've always, in the past, felt ashamed about it. But now, no condemnation. Mm-hmm. I can tell my story without shedding tears and breaking down. So, if you have been uh, raped or assaulted, um... Like I've been saying, healing, forgiveness, forgiving yourself, taking it easy on yourself, and just being more aware of your actions and the things that you do. You know what I mean? So hopefully this has helped somebody. And I'm praying for your healing, for your growth. And please forgive these people. It's probably going to be the hardest thing you have to do, but it's so it feels so much lighter to forgive those who have hurt us because like they say forgiveness is for who you not them it doesn't excuse what they did it doesn't mean that what they did was right this is for you remember that and you deserve it you deserve to forgive because guess what god forgives you when you ask him for forgiveness he'll forgive you and if you don't forgive guess what god won't forgive who you so you deserve that forgiveness so forgive Working on that forgiveness. And if you still like, I don't want to forgive, you need to ask God to help you to forgive. Yeah. So, love y'all. Be good, be safe. Now it was my testimony. Peace.